What's going on, wrestling family? I hope you're having an amazing day. So I don't know if you guys remember the show Tough Enough. I saw like two seasons of that show, one being the season where The Miz lost. And the first season, I remember that very vividly because when, when Maven won, as a kid, I was pissed off because I felt like he was trash in the ring and I should have been there in that opportunity and holding up that Tough Enough, you know, cement thing or whatever you want to call that thing. So Maven, if you are watching this channel right now, it shouldn't be me, not you. Should have been me, not you. Hope you're having a good day, by the way. But anyways, this video comes from one of my favorite channels to react to, Wrestling Ifs, my guy Path. This is called The Failure of the WWE Tough Enough Reboot. Let's get into this. Hit subscribe, family. Let's go. Dang, this is old school. A few months ago, we went back and took a look at the failure that was WWE Tough Enough, a show that ran from 2001 until 2004, co-produced by MTV, and was a reality show that was supposed to help the WWE find the next top stars of a generation. But instead of finding the next top stars, we got four seasons of absolute fucking buffoonery. From a girl going psycho and having a mental breakdown and stalking wrestlers, to what? watching a kid get beat up in the ring for real Ooh. by Mark or Holly for no reason, to even a rookie trying to kill almost him. breaking Kurt Angle's arm on top. Yo, really quick, whoever that referee is right there, I forget his name. I hope he got a fat check from that situation and a lifetime supply of milk from Kurt Angle. Because if that rookie would have broke Kurt Angle's arm on live TV, that would have been devastating, bro. He could have ended his career right then and there. But it's crazy. But anyways, let's continue television tough enough was a giant failure even though there was so much potential and the first season was actually really fun this should have been a maven mm. pav get him off my screen pav get him off my screen major tool for the wwe instead it ended up being a failure <laughs> yo by season four they had contestants being forced to cross dress and then dance at a strip club what if that wasn't enough they also had to kiss 80 year old ladies on television <laughs> what season is going three on in 2003 ended up being the last season on television as MTV was that. like yo yo no no, no. We, we don't need this and no other television network wanted to pick it up either so season four ended up being a part of smackdown and it was also the last season of the original tough enough as daniel pewter won the million dollar tough enough and was released a year later and didn't even get his million dollars tough enough was done no was way bro no that's why really quick that's why you got to get a lawyer because there is no way i'm doing all of that and i'm guaranteed on paper i'm supposed to get a million dollars and i don't get my ends i don't get my money at the end of it nah i don't know if he's suing him or not but ain't no way bro ain't no way on, leave the memories alone and the WWE basically pretended like it never happened but fast forward seven years and a lot of things can change in seven years it was 2011 and uh, remember this guy from tough enough season four well in Biz. 2011 he ended up main eventing wrestlemania the most successful person to ever come out of any tough enough and of course uh, he wasn't even the winner by 2011 the WWE had changed drastically new logos new everything new presentation it was now tvpg and it was a more family friendly sanitized product and now they had the itch they, they wanted to bring back a special reality show for a new generation of fans and in late 2010 it was rumored that the wwe was bringing back tough enough and this time on the usa network seven years later they were gonna try it again and now the wwe was much smarter they knew what they were doing they even had stone cold steve austin as the host of the show trainers were not gonna be al snow and taz no they had trish stratus booker t and creepy as bill dema and this time <laughs> the majority of the contestants were even like dude from uh, or i don't know if you guys are was 90 day fiance the guy that was fighting the filipino lady with the they say he has no neck he kind of reminds me of him people with athletic backgrounds and, and miss america because publicity right and after of course, a seven of course. year hiatus in april of 2011 wwe tough enough was finally back the season started and you were greeted with the contestants and right away you knew this was going to be rough. The first skills challenge was very, Dean very Ambrose? simple. I mean, you're trained to be a wrestler, so what's the first thing you do? You do bumps and you run the ropes, literally the basics of wrestling. If you can't do this, you're, you're never going to succeed, all the time. right? So they do the challenge and some people were killing it. They were doing their thing. Others like Ariane, I, I mean, it, it could be worse, right? <laughs> like a kid rolling, just roll. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. So Eric was the biggest guy in the contest. Yo, I didn't know the weekend tried to be a wrestler first. That's what's up. That's what he meant by I can't feel my face. He got smacked. Had the look, he was tall. 
he had the look he was tall and all the trainers were so excited for him literally just because he was tall so they had him run the ropes and yo ladies and gentlemen i swear to god it looked like he's about to fall over and die <laughs> i have never been so concerned what? in my life watching someone run but then i saw this it, it doesn't make any sense this guy almost <laughs> died running the ropes and meanwhile another guy was trying so hard you would think it's a call of duty lobby he was trying so hard his fucking teeth fell out meanwhile oh. Marianne tried running the ropes uh you know she kept having to pull her pants up and this triggered trish stratus so much and lastly you have miss america who has probably never ran a day in her life so she's trying to be a wrestler and she knew that running the ropes was probably gonna hurt her butt so she really went in there with a pad on her ass while she was running the ropes yo steve austin found out about this and i have never seen this man look so disrespected in my life so the first challenge didn't really go too well and after the skills at the end of the episode after arianne almost died taking a bump after eric almost fell out of the ring they had three people in the ring and these were the bottom three the lights were dimmed and out of these three people one of them was going to be eliminated and stone cold steve austin it was all up to him he chose who was going to be eliminated so austin gets to talk he's asking them simple questions like why do you want to be a wrestler are you sure you have passion for this and ladies and gentlemen in the first episode of tough enough season 5 i present to you the greatest moment in tough enough history actually no 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 scratch that this is the greatest moment the funniest moment in wrestling history so ariane is in the ring and she instantly just starts crying okay she's emotional she wants this bad she wants to be a wrestler oh so she knows it's crying, over right but after that then she starts beefing the girl beside her for no reason the girl just standing there didn't do anything <laughs> she was beefing her like oh, you suck you've been doing this for nine years i've been doing it for two days <laughs> I'm better than you. Like, this, this, this is how you. This is a clear sign of a person knowing that it's about to be over or that it's already over, right? This can go for guys, for ladies. If you ever broken up with somebody before and they know what's coming and they start hitting you with the waterworks, especially when they know they did you dirty, when they know you, they did you dirty, they start crying. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. I apologize. I didn't, I didn't mean to do it. I, I love you. I want to stay with you. I want. We can work this out. We can figure this out. And you tell them one more time. Tell them one more time. Nah, nah, it's, it's cool. It's, it's over. It's all right. You, I need to go. We need to go out separate ways. What you did was messed up. Or I need to, you know, uh, learn more of myself. It's not you. It's me. Then all of a sudden, they turn into Satan himself and start telling you, you're trash. You broke. You got a, <laughs> you got a small penis. Da, 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 da. You got a, like, I'm, and you're like, two seconds ago, you were crying for all these things you're trying to disrespect right now. You didn't care about this the whole entire time we were together. So why is it a problem right now? Oh, okay. That's even better. Now you give me a better reason to cut this off. It's clear she's going to get eliminated. She knows that, but she's trying her best to do whatever to stay. She's trying to beef. She's trying to cry. She's doing whatever she can to survive <laughs> one more week. And then Stone Cold Steve Austin asked her one last question, right? He just wanted to know how much of a fan of wrestling she truly is. And maybe if she answers this with a proper answer, it might just save her. So he asked her, what is your favorite wrestling match of all time? And she answers. Just with Melina and Alicia Fox. Whoa, 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 I know, I know, I know. I might not have cleaned my ears properly today. There's no way she said what I think she said. Hold on. It might just save her. So he asked her, what is your favorite wrestling match of all time? And she answers. Just with Melina and Alicia Fox. Melina and Alicia Fox. Okay. I wanted the individuals who's like, okay, someone's favorite, whatever, may not be the best. Like some, like one, some of my favorite movies may not be critically the best of all time. And maybe she heard like, who's your favorite wrestlers, but even then, that don't even make any sense. But even if that, okay, even if that is her favorite match, you got Stone Cold Steve Austin right in front of your face. If you're saying that you want this, at least lie to the man, okay? <laughs> Now, I don't know how much, you know, because it seemed like lying would have worked, okay? Because she could have lied and said, oh, my favorite match is you versus Bret Hart or you versus The Rock, both WrestleMania matches that are classics, you know, because obviously lying works. You saw what happened to the boogeyman, right? When he lied about his age, he became a wrestler. He's, he's a, he's a, I guess you can call him a legend. Uh, 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 I, I don't know. Well, that's all. You guys figured that out. But it helped him out. So all she had to say was, I like the match with you and The Rock or you versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania. That's all. That would have saved it. But, you know, I guess honesty is the best policy for her. Who? Yo, this Ooh. will forever be one of the funniest <laughs> moments in wrestling history. The genuine look on Austin's face. Oh my god. Like, 
who it is goaded yo austin looked like he wanted to shoot himself austin looked like he wanted to go to the closest bridge just jump off and and just leave this earth you have stone cold steve austin standing in front of you who asked you your favorite wrestling match of all time and this girl said melina versus alicia fox why right there just sealed her fate austin just no he is this is straight blasphemy he has been bamboozled hoodwinked you name it he's just like you know what just just get out of here you yeah you gotta go up for that enough. one just leave please get out of here so arianne is the first one eliminated in the first episode of the season no prior wrestling training she almost breaks her neck doing a bump she can't run the ropes and says melina versus alicia fox is her favorite match of all time yeah so just off that she gotta go because i was gonna say at first you, the weekend gotta go all right the weekend aka the black hercules from dragon ball z he gotta go but off of that saying that that's your favorite match nah you automatically out of here sorry she gets eliminated and as she's leaving the ring she says this I'm still tough enough you'll still see me in the wwe Oh, they all say that, right? back in 2011, this was a big meme, like, ha, ha, hilarious, cool, whatever. We respect it, respect the optimism, but, but respectfully, we're not going to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Why are they yes, Ariane, who almost dies, what? the first one eliminated in the show, ends up becoming the most successful contestant on the show. She would go Yo. on to have a six-year career with the WWE. She's in video games, action figures, WrestleMania, and in 2020, she even ended up on AEW. This girl, this one right here, what is, what is life? Hey, man, I, I guess I got to take back everything I said negative about her. I still don't agree with that as far as being the best match, but it's her favorite. And she spoke it into existence. I can't be mad. I got to give her respect for that, man. Regardless of where you feel she is, as far as um, the ladies when it comes to wrestling, she, she found a way back somehow. She worked hard. I guess she is tough enough. <laughs> <laughs> yes, GTA. As the show went on, it just made less and less sense. The second week, Matt Cross, a wrestler for nine years, probably the best and most talented, the most trained guy, was eliminated oh, nice. because he didn't show the judges anything crazy. What the fuck did they want him to do? To this day, I, I don't understand. Did they want him to pull out a 450 splash off the top of the building? Should he have done a Canadian Destroyer and broke one of the trainees necks? No, they literally eliminated him for no reason because he didn't prove himself. At one point, Austin says, All I've seen you do is a tackle and a drop down and a body slam. I mean, Steve, th that was the drill, isn't it, bruv? But nah, Matt Cross, you suck, go home. I mean, okay, was he ever going to realistically win? No, he's 5'7". That was not going to oh, happen. Oh, that's what it is. the second episode? R really? As the show went on, you had competitions where they had to play basketball with dwarves. Sadly, Hula was not there. They had to run away from dogs and so on. But also, did I mention that this season had Toby Flenderson. You know, he was also a contestant on the show. Sadly, he didn't really make it that far and had to go back to Dunler Mifflin. But this season... No, come on, Pav. Don't do Toby like that, bro. We got love and respect for Toby, man. Dunder Mifflin all day, every day, man. I miss Michael Scott, by the way. But the fact that they, they eliminated that guy that was really good in the ring, yeah, obviously it probably has something to do with his height. But I really feel like when it comes to these shows that have contests like American Idol or Tough Enough or whatever, they know that there is a specific person on the, in the contestants that are way too good, right? And I think that, and I feel like they feel like that, that person's so ahead of everybody else it doesn't give like good entertainment because it feels like it's just a slaughter, right? So either they eliminate them early or they let them go to the end and eliminate them as a second, you know, as a, the runner up or whatever. So I feel like shows do that all the time just to make people in America feel like, oh, you know, you don't have to be this good to win. Anybody can win it. Even if you are you have nine years in the ring, even if you don't, you can make it to the top. And, you know, that stuff is kind of crazy, but I guess it's, you know, for entertainment, I guess season was just boring this show just sucked the season sucked see the older seasons were very stupid but they still had that early 2000s reality show charm not this one yeah this was just people who didn't belong who didn't care but he carried himself like a douchebag he didn't trust anyone at points he wouldn't even shake hands with anyone he had actual charisma and it was clear that he would you know he should go on to win he definitely had the most potential along with martin but martin got injured in week six or seven or so so luke makes it all the way to the finals right and it should be an easy win he has the charisma he as the look he was legit the second coming of the miz and, and it was perfect meanwhile the second finalist you know his opponent had no charisma no charm and honestly was pretty boring there's no fan voting since the company chooses who they want to win it doesn't matter if one guy's a heel or if one guy's a face right they can just choose who they think is the best so it should be an easy choice right like it's not rocket science charisma talented no charisma kind of talented but you know question mark should be an easy choice it's not rocket science
Nah, apparently this is fucking NASA because the problem was Luke was 6'1, the other idiot was 6'5, and you already know what the hell is going down if Vince oh, is choosing the winner. No. Since there was no fan voting and it was all up to Vince and the WWE, I guarantee you from week one, from episode one, they knew exactly who they wanted to win this show. Especially when the guy who ended up winning was already under developmental contract. What? So yeah, that's what happened. It was a live it's finale. The two finalists are in the ring. One has the I mean, I don't know why I'm so surprised. But that's still messed up, man. That's really messed up. Personality of a rock. No, not this one. I'm talking about Patrick's house. The other one is a natural <laughs> heel that everyone loves to Early hate. Vince comes out. Austin is there. And to no one's surprise, they choose the guy who is 6'5 with long hair and is already under WWE developmental contract. So at that point, he wins. And it's like, crazy. what was the point of this? What was the point of this show? You had 10 weeks for what? Like, what was the reason of this show if the winner was going to be someone you already were in contract with? So that just made this whole show seem like the stupidest, most pointless pointless the most useless reality show in the history of television that's trust me, crazy there have been some very very useless reality shows i mean have you seen netflix these days but they like, didn't you know relate okay, it does kind of make some sense okay you know what maybe they made him win because they wanted to give him some exposure maybe they did this so they can have this guy win get his name out there you know to start the winner's career with a nice big push and what better way to do it than to be hand selected by vince and by stone cold steve austin in the middle of the ring with ten thousand people watching you know everyone watched 10 weeks of this guy grinding it out showcase his personality show them what he's made of and now let's coronate him let's give this moment 10,000 people austin vince in the middle of the ring at this moment he officially became the chosen one and you know what when you put it like that it's fine it's perfect maybe we are the idiots for doubting the wwe what a great master plan nah. and this begins andy's wwe career a future legend in the making They hosted a reality show for 10 weeks, had the guy win just for him to get slapped by the boss and then get stone cold stunned in the ring while they laugh at him. What is wrong with this company? No, 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 no. This has to be mental illness. The WWE at this point in 2011 was so brain dead that it didn't make any sense. They spent 10 weeks building up this guy and now in front of 10,000 people, millions watching at home, they made him look like a bozo. Now granted, he was already a bozo, but this didn't help. And ladies and gentlemen, this happens, he gets slapped, he gets stunned, and we mm. never see Big Andy in a WWE ring ever again. And in less than one year, he was fired for taking steroids dang nothing and then years later after hard work after dedication after pushing himself after getting off the steroids after training in the ring going to flatbacks training year after year he came back as all we we know as the wrestler who renamed himself to big cast <laughs> So yeah, that was Tough Enough 2011. <laughs> another Tough Enough, another L, Elise Ariane, you know, went on to become Cameron and did her thing. But what was this? What was the point of this? This was just so sad looking back at it. Like I know season four was rough, but this was just sad. This was just horrible. And the thing is the WWE knew this too. The ratings sucked. Nobody watched this. Nobody cared. And Tough Enough was, it was a flop. And once again after this, to no one's surprise, the show was canceled. Finally, WWE Tough Enough was done, it was over, and, and after this, after everything we had just seen, hopefully it was for good this time. Rest of these Tough Enough, thank you for the memories, thank you for everything you've done from 2001 until 2011, great, thank you, I hope I never see you again. Wait, when was that dated? Never see you again. It's in 2015. Oh, I guess it don't matter anymore. Just four years later, they couldn't even wait seven years. No, no, no. They couldn't even wait seven years. Four years later, these idiots thought they could do it again. Tough Enough was back in 2015, and this was supposed to be better than ever. This was supposed to be the biggest, oh, the best. Oh, Velveteen Dream. That was the season he was in? Four years later, these idiots thought they could do it again. Tough Enough was back in 2015, and this was supposed to be better than ever. This was supposed to be the big. Wasted talent, bro. Wasted talent. Every time I see his photos, he was one of my favorite wrestlers in NXT. 
He, I just knew he was going to be a huge star when he got to the main roster. Unfortunately, for some reason, they never gave him the NXT Championship belt. But that's neither here nor there. But dang, he wasted. He was going to have a legendary career, but he had to do what he did. I mean, he didn't have to do it, but I mean, like, what? I, I, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what to say. The best tough enough of all time. You know, it's a proven flop that MTV doesn't want it. USA Network doesn't want it anymore. It's fine. It's fine. We have the WWE Network. We can put anything on there now. Yo, these idiots really don't know when to let it go. Now with three new judges, Hulk Hogan, Paige, and the only judge without an unauthorized sex tape, Daniel Bryan. Now with what was <laughs> supposed to be the best talent pool ever. No. And if you're looking back at it, contestants at this time are some very, very familiar faces. You had Chelsea Green, Sonya Deville. Ville, Mandy Rose, what? and the future Velveteen Dream. Oh no. And of course, the yeah. biggest familiar face who didn't even make it to this show but sent in his audition, the future MJF, who actually sent what? in a video audition for this is the one he's and it's submitted to on WWE's official channel. I might check out the season. I might actually check out the season. I'm interested now. now. But he wasn't selected. And honestly, that's the biggest takeaway from this video. Imagine. Imagine if MJF ended up on Tough Enough. Future of your company is looking at you dead in the face. Honestly, thank God he wasn't because it's cursed. The best thing that ever happened to him was doing his own grind, doing his own thing and ending up being MJF. But imagine, imagine a young MJF on WWE Tough Enough. But yeah, on the surface, you're like, wow, that's they four people eliminated I recognize, him right? It must be a good show or at least a decent season. Well, it's it's tough enough, man. What do you expect? Most of the contestants were NPCs. The winners were total flop. It, it's literally tough enough, okay? But yeah, it, it wasn't that bad, all right? It wasn't the worst season ever anything, but nothing memorable happened. Like, okay, yeah, in the casting special, Sonya came out and for the first time, right? And it was a pretty big deal. But after that, like, nothing of value ever happened. Like, oh, wow, Patrick became Velveteen Dream for the first time, which normally, looking back, like, oh, awesome, that's great. But well, we all know how that ended up. But throughout the yeah. season, everyone, such as the judges and the trainers, would all roast one guy named ZZ. Yes, his name was ZZ. On his conditioning, how he would get tired after doing moves for like 10 seconds, how he would eat everything and anything. To simply put it, ZZ was not in good shape. But for some reason, every single week, this guy would strive off elimination just because the fans found him funny. He just never got <laughs> voted out by the fans. For some reason, the fans just love this guy. And somehow, this guy right here ended up becoming one of the finalists. Then on the women's side, you had Sarah Lee, who also became a fan favorite. Nobody does it like Sarah Lee. I like that Brit pretty useless all she would do is just smile she couldn't cut her promo she couldn't talk she couldn't wrestle all she would do is just smile and it got to the point where even chris jericho who's hosting the show just got so annoyed at her and put her on blast and roasted her and wanted her you know to wild out show some personality he wanted to light mm. a fire under her nah she just stood there smiling and grinning like hello she was actually so bad at He's everything still she was not good how do you feel you've been doing a lot better at what? <laughs> but it's tough enough. So you know what that means? She ends up winning the women's side of the show. And no. on the men's side, Josh won. Now, have you guys ever heard of Josh? Probably not. Well, he's 6'7", long hair. Of course he was going to win Tough Enough. This guy, in two years, was Another released. One. So was Sarah. The two winners of Tough Enough 2015 by 2017 were both fired from the WWE. Fantastic. What a great show. Meanwhile, the losers, these two girls over here, ended up becoming Mandy and Sonya and are still on WWE television to this day. And another loser, uh, literally. Not to this day. Not to this day. This must be dated. Patrick ended up becoming Velveteen Dream, who had the most potential out of any Tough Enough contestant ever. Oh, like, you wasted. This man was it. destined to main event WrestleMania. He was so good, had so much potential that even John Cena wanted to work with him and thought he was going to be a huge star. When I say that the world was his, I'm not putting it lightly. He was literally, you know, destined to be Seriously. one of the faces of the company. But yo, once you get this section on your Wikipedia page, it's over. It's over, fam. Tough Enough Season 6 was a failure, okay? Amanda, aka Mandy Rose, she should have definitely won, but she didn't. But honestly, it could have been worse because, like, at the end of the day, at least we did get Sonya and Mandy out of this, but this season was just so boring. It was so bland, so worthless. There was no drama, no nothing. By 2015, everyone knew that Tough Enough was useless. Tough Enough is actually cursed. I don't care what anyone says, this show is cursed. This was the last season of this show, and I pray what is it's he 
things like that there is no need even though it is a great idea it seems like a foolproof idea it is obvious that the wwe has no idea what the hell they are doing the fact that after six seasons this show is largely useless and is known more for its controversies it's so sad for some reason they just select the worst contestants the worst people generally win and then the losers end up being the best of the bunch but even then that is pretty rare too and then most of the time everyone is forgotten and then the <laughs>